So I think most uh, of the tests that, that I was mentioning that are designed to kind of rule out mimickers, you know, they're all normal in Parkinson's disease. So for years and years, all of the tests you could run, you'd expect it to be normal, including generally, uh, at least today's version of the MRI of the brain. It should be pretty normal in Parkinson's disease. Um, more recently, uh, there's been a test developed that is, is termed a DAT scan. And what it involves is a certain compound that has a low level of radioactivity and it hooks onto the ends of the dopamine neurons that are affected in Parkinson's disease. So you can administer that compound intravenously and then that will label the dopamine circuit and then the patient can go into a special kind of scanner that reads that low level radioactivity and see a picture not of the structure of the brain but basically of the location of these neurons and the amount of those neurons. So what happens is that in Parkinson's disease those signals are decreased and usually they're decreased, uh, they're, they're decreased asymmetrically so that because of the cross connections the side opposite the predominant symptom would have less signal than the, uh, than the side that's, that's, uh, that's more normal. So that's what the scan is and it should be abnormal in Parkinson's disease. Um, there are some limitations. First of all, it's, it's, you know, it costs money like everything else and often it's just not necessary. If there's a patient with a classic um, history, a classic exam, most neurologists don't need a DAT scan to diagnose Parkinson's disease. I think it's really, it's really going to be used uh, in, in special situations. So by far and away, most folks I see with Parkinson's, I do not get a DAT scan on. But I think it does have its place and it can be a helpful tool.